regardless of when you wake up in the morning, one of the first things that happens is that your body temperature is increasing. And that's just going to happen naturally. Some of it is going to be the consequence of your moving around a bit, but really the increase in body temperature is one of the main triggers for why you woke up in the first place. That increase in body temperature in turn causes an increase in the release of a hormone called cortisol. Cortisol is often discussed as a stress hormone, but it's not just associated with stress. It also enhances your immune system provided cortisol is elevated at the right times. And the right time for cortisol to be elevated is when you first wake up in the morning. That increase in cortisol is also going to increase metabolism. It's also going to increase your ability to focus mentally and for you to move your body. So again, cortisol is often con demonized and considered this bad thing. And indeed, you don't want cortisol to be chronically or consistently elevated throughout the day or night. But you do want cortisol to reach its peak early in the day, right about the time you wake up. One way that you can ensure that that cortisol peak occurs early in the day, right about the time that you wake up, is to view bright light, ideally from sunlight, within the first 30 to 60 minutes after waking. That's right. View bright sunlight within the first 30 to 60 minutes after waking. Everybody, whether or not you live in a cloudy place or a sunny place, whether or not there's cloud cover or not that day, should really strive to get bright light in your eyes, ideally from sunlight, within the first 30 to 60 minutes after waking. The reason for that is very simple. You want to trigger that cortisol increase to occur very early in your day. And you don't want that cortisol peak to happen later, which is what will happen if you wait to get outside and see sunlight. The reason for this is that you have a set of neurons, nerve cells in your eye. Those neurons respond best to bright light. And especially right after waking early in the day, they are best able to signal to a set of neurons that reside over the roof of your mouth called the suprachiasmatic nucleus, which is a cluster of neurons that then sends a huge number of other signals, electrical and chemical out to your entire body that triggers that cortisol increase, provides a wake up signal for your brain and body and sets in motion a timer for you to fall asleep later that night. So the way to get this sunlight viewing early in the day is to look toward the sun. If it's too bright to look at directly, well, then don't do that. You just look toward it, but not directly at it. It's absolutely fine to blink. In fact, I encourage you to blink whenever you feel the impulse to blink. Never look at any light, sunlight or otherwise, that's so bright that it's painful to look at because you can damage your eyes. But for this morning sunlight viewing, it's best to not wear sunglasses. That's right, to not wear sunglasses at least for this morning sunlight viewing. It is absolutely fine to wear eyeglasses or contact lenses, so-called corrective lenses. In fact, those will serve you well in this practice or this tool because they will focus the light onto your neural retina and onto those melanopsin intrinsically photosensitive ganglion cells. If your eyeglasses or contact lenses have UV protection, that's okay. There's so many different wavelengths of light coming from the sun and they are bright enough that they will trigger the mechanisms that you want triggered at this early time of day. So try and get outside, ideally within the first five minutes of waking, or maybe it's 15 minutes, but certainly within the first hour after waking. This is not some woo biology thing. This is grounded in the core of our physiology. There are literally hundreds, if not thousands of quality peer reviewed papers showing that light viewing early in the day is the most powerful stimulus for wakefulness throughout the day. And it has a powerful positive impact on your ability to fall and stay asleep at night. So this is really the foundational power tool for ensuring a great night's sleep and for feeling more awake during the day. Now, how much light and how much light viewing do you need? This is going to vary depending on person and place, I mean, literally where you live on earth, whether or not there's a lot of tree cover, whether or not you're somebody who has sensitive eyes or less sensitive eyes. It's really impossible for me to give an absolute prescriptive, but we can give some general guidelines. In general, on a clear day, meaning no cloud cover or minimal cloud cover, you want to get this sunlight exposure to your eyes for about five minutes or so could be three minutes one day, could be seven minutes the next day, about five minutes. On a day where there's cloud cover, so the sun is just peeking through the clouds or it's more dense cloud cover, you want to get about 10 minutes of sunlight exposure to your eyes early in the day. And on days that are really densely overcast or maybe even a rainy, you're going to want to get as much as 20 or 30 minutes of sunlight exposure. Another key thing is do not forget about, just don't try and get this sunlight exposure through a windshield of a car or a window, whether or not it's tinted or otherwise. It takes far too long. It's simply not going to trigger the relevant mechanisms. 
you would be standing there all day trying to get enough light into your eyes from the morning sunlight. And by then, the sun will have already moved from low solar angle to overhead, and it simply won't work for all sorts of mechanisms related to your circadian rhythm functions. Fundamentally speaking, get that morning sunlight viewing. I promise you will be grateful that you did. It makes everybody feel better, feel more alert, and it will greatly assist with your ability to fall and stay asleep later that night. 